One of the most basic and useful MIDI techniques is the overlapping of a first note atop a second note. The temporary sounding of the two voices gives the impression of a legato transition, where none exists. Let's first listen to a basic phrase from the 2D patch of our Hollywood Winds library. This region has been quantized and contains no point at which both notes play simultaneously. To begin, let's drag the edge of the first note to the right, making it longer, and allowing the second note to trigger before the first has finished. Now let's drag the beginning of the second note to the left, allowing it to enter slightly before the beat. As you can hear, the resulting overlap tricks the ear into thinking a transition sample exists, where none was recorded. This effect is especially noticeable on chords from ensemble patches, which may have no recorded legato samples. Even the best MIDI controller played by the finest pianist will not always yield a perfectly realistic performance. The best mock-up artists spend a good portion of their time in the piano roll window, editing the velocity of every region entered. In this example, let's listen to an unedited MIDI performance using our Piano in Blue library and a consumer-level MIDI keyboard. Though all the information is there, you can hear the occasional notes sticking out or not striking loud enough. By selecting all of the notes and dragging downwards, Logic compresses the MIDI velocities, making the ranges consistently lower and closer together. Using the Velocity tool, we can restore the newly compressed performance back to its original dynamic range, this time with a more consistent mezzo forte. It takes a small amount of time for your sequencer to tell Contact what samples to trigger and for that sound to actually speak. Thus, compared to live musicians, sequencers start working from behind the beat from the beginning. Legato transitions by nature have an additional leg to consider. Whereas sustained and short samples contain only one note, legato samples contain two, the second of which is the new note. The first contains the final moments of the previous note. There is also the physical connection of the two notes, which we call the legato transition. In general, legato transitions are short, and by offsetting the region to the left by roughly 35 milliseconds, you can set the second note squarely on the grid. Session musicians naturally anticipate the coming data in this sense, allowing their performance to lock to the click. Modern libraries often use the mod wheel of your MIDI keyboard to replicate the dynamics of the instrument being sampled. With the mod wheel down, you're playing in the quietest range of the patch, and with the mod wheel up, the loudest. CC7 changes the overall volume of the patch, thus setting exactly how loud the loudest dynamic of the patch will sound. Inserting a gain plugin set to around 10 decibels greatly enhances the resolution of the patch's recorded dynamics, allowing for finer tuning of the dynamics. Note the gain plugin changes only how loud the patch sounds, leaving intact the chosen dynamic value set via the mod wheel. Gain compensation is especially useful on brass. A 10 decibel boost allows you to dial in a powerful lead tone on the Cinebrass Pro 12 horn legato patch without triggering the brassy fortissimo layer, which may not be musically appropriate at the time. Tune in for more tutorials from Cinesamples. Samples.